Okay, guys, we're going to walk Mabel and Charlie. Now, you guys saw Charlie a few weeks ago, and uh, yeah, I had her in the kennel, and she was barking and growling and kind of scared and holed up in the corner a little bit. And when her, you know, Charlie's owners contacted me, you know, they told me what kind of dog she was. They sent me some pictures of her, and uh, they said she's, uh, you know, barking and growling at people, especially like little kids. Well, listen, guys, that's tough for me, right? I don't want to put my name on a deal and then end up having it go south and, uh, you know, dog end up hurting somebody. But uh, they convinced me that they were willing to put in some work. And uh, so I had them bring Charlie down here to hang out with us for a little while. And, of course, when she got down here, she was afraid of everybody. She would run and hide. Every time I would let her out, I'd have to, you know, go find her up in the corners of the fields. Uh, she wouldn't get around any of the other dogs. She would bark and growl at all the people that came down here, especially the children. You know, she still doesn't like George. <laughs> but she's doing pretty well, isn't she, Charlotte? Yeah. Very nice. Now, so you say, well, Stoney, what did you do for that kind of dog? I, guys, I run a system, right? So I pretty much do the same thing with all the dogs. I just make adjustments. <laughs> I just make adjustments based on the individual talent, right? So I'm just like any old school uh, sports coach, right? I just get the dogs in, I run them through my system, and then we give them a little extra attention in one spot or the other <laughs> uh, based on <laughs> what they need. Come on, warmer lady. Okay, now, so here's where, like, you get yourself in trouble with these kind of dogs. I'll wait for you, Charlotte, and help you. <laughs> Come on. Uh, when you have a dog like Charlie, She's a very big, powerful dog, and if something goes wrong with Charlie, it's a catastrophic mistake. So you can't really just be hanging out on YouTube looking for ways to deal with nervous, anxious, aggressive pit bull mixes, and then, you know, going and trying, uh, you know, because somebody can get hurt, right? Okay? And what Charlie really needed was lots of what, Charlotte? Lots of love, right? But here's the problem. Whose child are you going to talk into loving on a pit bull mix that <laughs> growls and barks at them, right? Because the love is not unconditional love, right? If some little kid just went up to Charlie and tried to just love on her unconditionally, well, uh, that, that's not going to work out, okay? Something bad's going to happen. Something real bad's going to happen. So we don't just give them unconditional love. We give them conditional love. We come out here and we ask them to make progress every day towards coming and being still and having good manners, starting social situations off by being calm, attentive, and polite, and refraining from behavior that's dangerous, destructive, or rude. Now, that sounds very easy, okay? And uh, it's not, okay? It is simple. I mean, what we do is simple. We run a system. We run the same system on every dog. But it's not easy. And that's where, you know, things mess up. And, and here's, the, here's the, what gets you, you know, when you're out here trying to research this kind of stuff on YouTube, is not only, like... Not only do you need a system, you need people to help you with the system. I could come out here and work Charlie every day and she would get better, you know, and uh, then I'd send her home. She's not really much better around children because I'm not a child. I'm, I'm kind of a, like a child-sized adult, but I'm not a child. I look like an old child, I guess, you know, but, but so I need children to walk Charlie and luckily I'm in a position where, you know, I have my own captive labor force, number one, but number two, I have a lot of children that come hang out with us and all of the kids that I see, you know, they want to hang out with dogs and they want to work with dogs and they want to take direction because kind of a prerequisite for bringing your children to hang out with Uncle Stoney is that you have children that mind well, you know. So like I was lucky in that I was able to get Charlie around a lot of different kinds of people from 8 to 80 as they say, right? And um, uh, it's really worked out pretty well, and I'm super happy, okay? But now here's the thing. When you're a professional dog trainer, and you have a nice dog training place like me, go ahead and come up here, Charlotte, we'll do them both at the same time. Uh, it's kind of, it's our thing to get dogs to look good when they're here at our kennel. Our problems come when the dogs go home, okay? We call it the rehab effect, right? It's easy to be good when you're in rehab because there ain't nothing to do. But as soon as you get out of rehab, you got a buddy says, hey, let's go to the bar. We'll just have one drink, you know, and one drink turns into 30 drinks, and there you go. Now you're back in rehab. Same thing with the dog, guys. So, look, uh, this video is just kind of a little, um, come on, Charlie, let's get up here. It's just kind of a little check-in video to tell you, you know, how, how Charlie's doing and that dogs like Charlie uh, with structured, uh, with a little bit of structure, a little bit of love, a lot of attention, a lot of understanding, a lot of consistency, a lot of persistence, they can do pretty well, okay? 
especially in a professional dog training environment like what I provide. And there's others, uh, maybe not as good as mine, but they're out there, you know. <laughs> uh, but guys, none of it works if you're not going to do it when you get home, okay. Don't treat your dog training like, uh, you know, sending somebody to rehab and then when they come home, you offer to buy them a beer, right. So this dog is doing great. We can take this dog anywhere. We can take her uptown. She's pretty good around most kids. She doesn't like every kid, of course, you know, I don't like every kid, so I feel her, you know. I don't growl at them. She does still. But, and we're working through that. We've established a really good foundation, okay, but all my work will be for naught if when that dog goes home, the owners don't keep up with it, right. Just like if you have a friend that goes to rehab, it's, you know, you have to help them stay successful, right? You can't let them get out of rehab, offer them a beer, right? So uh, when this dog goes home, right, I'm counting on its owners to do what's necessary to keep the dog moving in the right direction and take advantage of the remedial training foundation that we've started. Okay, so if you guys are looking for remedial training, uh, number one, don't call me because I very rarely do it. It's too much trouble, too much work. It takes a really dedicated, awesome dog trainer to do it. And some dog trainers do it all month, every month and they're better people than me, right? I'm just not that good a person, right? So, uh, take my advice, get your dog out, get them moving, be interesting, get them plenty of exercise, plenty of socialization at an early age so this stuff doesn't uh, pop up. If it does pop up, find you a training, tra find you a trainer who runs a good system, has a positive environment, has access to a lot of children or a lot of whatever it is that, uh, you know, your dog doesn't like, okay, and is willing to work with you in the post uh, in kennel training phase because that's where this right here this this progress that we've, we've made that's where it's going to you know that's the make or break part of it all right i can send this dog home and she's doing great but if they don't keep up with it well then it was all uh, a waste of time and money all right guys i'll see y'all next week